There she is. Right, all right, you lot. Uh, I'm back again. Uh, another old waffling old man story. Uh, but I thought it'd be a much more fun thing to do to bring Auntie. So, all right. Dad! Auntie! <laughs> so, so, everybody's bored of my stories, but everybody wants to know about the Kim Wilde story. Everybody asks, every interview I do, uh, tell us the story about Kim. Yeah. And so, who better to ask than you? So, we're going to ask you. We want Straight you to, we from want the you to tell the story. Mouth. Exactly. Well, I can win it. So, <laughs> go on. Um, you, you just tell the story. But what, what, what was the story? What, why, why did we even end up on your radar? I guess is even the start. I don't even know why we did. Actually, we must have bumped it. We well, must have been there at some all, point. Let's 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 wind wind it right back. First of all, right you, you, you did the best cover version of Kiss in America that any band have ever done and will ever do. And of course, that had come onto my radar, and I just thought this band of freaking awesome. And then I studied Twitter at some point, and then we kind of met on Twitter, didn't we, Dad? It was Twitter. It was <laughs> it, because because our our. our people uh we're, we're badger i could see them doing it they were all badgering you saying uh you know yeah. if, if we get you know if we get this single going again you know will you play a show with her i could see them giving you a load of hassle on there so okay yeah. I, I messaged you is how i saw it there you go so then then we struck up a, a relationship on twitter didn't I, didn't we you and i it, yeah and then we got and then we just decided well it's about that time we we met i can't remember why we thought that was important but we did decided it was then um, we I did we, i think we were going to talk about doing a project together or something i can't remember but anyway we decided to meet at the bar in king's cross didn't we we did and I was so excited about meeting you at King's Cross in that bar that I actually managed to sit and be waiting for you outside that bar 24 hours before I was supposed Come to be on. there. <laughs> Which is the first thing I remember. I was in, I, I know where I was. I was in Manchester um, and I got a phone call and it's the first time I'd ever spoke to you. And all I got was a, where are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm in Manchester. <laughs> And that was it. You were in London already. And I was, yeah, yeah I know. Amazing. So then I just felt a bit stupid, really. And I sent you a picture of me sort of like going like this. <laughs> and then um, anyway, so the next day we met up and we had a good old chat, didn't we? I had a nice glass of red wine and you had something similar. And I think, yeah, we kind of we started putting a plan together. I'm not quite sure if that's what we talked about. I, I, th I, th I, think, I think wine was obviously first and foremost on the agenda. <laughs> um um and, and yeah it was a loose plan wasn't it I, I think the loose plan was um um do you fancy playing download with this was the, the very was. loose plan we got we yeah. we were booked for download uh and i was chanting my arm and saying would you um yeah and then i said yeah 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 and then it turned out i had another gig that day up up where, where near the gig was download was so I did both gigs that day I did an 80s gig with like ABC and Nick Kershaw and Heaven 17 and the usual 80s crowd Belinda Carlisle and then I nipped over and I hung out with you guys on da at download which was awesome I loved it it was it was a proper do though wasn't and it and I learned watch out grandma here comes the llama watch out grandma here comes the llama <laughs> it was brilliant it was like I mean of, of all the things I think there's a big there's a big thing at download because people are always bringing people out, and to a degree they're a bit obvious sometimes and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't think anybody saw that one coming. Um, <laughs> you, could e you could even hear the hush because when, when I said it was you and you were coming out, you kind of felt everybody go. Ooh. And there's this little drop with people going, "Really?" And, and then, "Oh!" Uh, and it was it was it just went off the scale it was tremendous it really did it's one of the, one of my all-time favorite stage experiences and oh my god and the clowns were running around costumes up the yin yang um oh god i remembered all, i just about remembered all the words and i could have stayed on there all afternoon well you did better than me because i never remember my own words so <laughs> if you stay you stand a chance of getting them right you're a consummate pro you are Oh, you're the consummate pro. You're yeah. a brilliant performer. You're I wonderful. Would. You're a great entertainer and you're full of fun and you, you go surfing in the crowd and everything. You're a brave one. Yeah, it, it, was a, it, was a, it was just a great thing to do, wasn't it? Yeah. And so, 
So that then took us to another level, didn't it? I'm always one for chancing my arm, as you've now worked out. Um, so we did that, which yeah. was, and the band will still say it's probably their favourite thing to have done as well was that. So it really was a special one for us, that. But then we had another idea. And yes. chance my arm again. And I remember your manager's face was one of delight when I had this one. Um, but we said to him, we've got an idea for a song, for a Christmas yes. song. Oh, yes. And thought, well, you know, well, we may as well like chuck that one at you as well. Would you fancy doing a song? And, and stupidly, you said yes again. Um, yes. <laughs> I'm not was... very good at saying no to you guys. I'm not quite sure what, what <laughs> this is. But anyway, you said something about a Christmas song and you sent over some delightful lyrics. Beautiful. Yeah. Having Christmas around the, you know, around the tree and, you know, all, all really lovely festive vibe. Correct. I felt it just needed just that little push over the cliff. And I said to Rick, who had just created his, his, his recording studio, Doghouse Studios, we'd never recorded anything in, in that studio. I said to Rick, the first thing we record together, it's got to be auspicious. It's got to be special. It's got to be fantastic. I said, we're going to create a Christmas masterpiece with Lawnmower Death, and we're going to call it Fuck You Christmas. <laughs> if you could have seen our fact, honestly, when, when we wrote them lyrics, or I wrote those lyrics. I deliberately didn't want to do something that you wouldn't do. So I did write some nice lyrics. You did. Uh, that's the, I think that's the whole point. And yeah. we, we sent it down to you. And it came back with that on it. <laughs> What's she <you> done? <laughs> we obviously thought we'd broken you or something. It was like, oh, my God. Uh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. So... It's true to say I haven't been the same since I bumped into you guys. I mean, I don't know what it is, but I haven't been quite the same. And thank God for that. And it was our pleasure. <laughs> anyway, so we made a really fun video. That was a top day. That, was, love... a, that was a really... In fact, it was two days, wasn't it? Oh, my God. Do you remember? I had to... I two wanted... days. I wanted to buy you guys some beers. Yeah. So... I sent you a text and I said, guys, what beers do you want? I, I mean, I'm standing in Tesco's looking at all these beers and I don't buy beer. And I'm thinking, I don't know. I mean, I know blokes like certain beers and they hate other beers and I don't want to buy the band beer they hate. So I text you and I said, what beer do you want? I'm standing there looking at the beers and you text back and you say proper job. And I'm thinking, Yes, I know. Of course, I'm doing a proper job. Of course, you, I've got you guys coming to the house. Of course, I'm going to do a proper job. I said, yes, of course, I'm going to do a proper job. What beer do you want? Proper job. And then I realised there's a beer called Proper Job. Naturally. And what a brew it is. Yes, it is. You know, I, I will be synonymous forever now with you and Proper Job. Because uh, they're the two things. Uh, but it, yeah. It was love. Do you know what? That was, it was even better for us. We still talk about this. When we came to your house, it was possibly one of the most surreal things for a band like us. I mean, coming to your house is fairly surreal anyway. I mean, that was a, that was an honesty in his own right, in the best possible lovely way. But that was odd for us, getting a big day out and going around Kim Wells' house and all that kind of thing. Then you got us beer. And then you bought us pork pie and you made us packed lunches. And they all still talk about the fact that you sent them home with a packed lunch, uh, which <laughs> yeah. is absolutely brilliant. And then bizarrely, Tony Hadley walks in. And it's like, I'm sure it's like this in your life all of the time. Uh, you know, varying people of great note walk into your house on a daily basis. But for us, it's like, Go on. and it's like I'm, I'm waiting for Timmy Mallet to turn up and, oh, I'm so, and, and what's going I on I totally had forgotten about Tony Hadley turning up and I remember you doing that photograph with him it's bloody hilarious well he just left Spandau so we 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 thought well we'll have some of that well let's stick a rumour out that he's joined Lorma instead <laughs> as if he's going to have joined Lorma but he was he was just brilliant I mean it's, brilliant I, 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 oh, oh, Pete, I just Pete, presume Pete. it's like that in your world all the time obviously Kim dad 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 remember when when I came up north to that lovely recording studio and we were all rehearsing for download yeah. and right. literally as we're rehearsing there is someone on a lawnmower outside 
coming towards the studio yeah. on, a, on a ride on Loma. And I thought, they're winding me up. No, no, um, that was brilliant. That, that was... Um... That was Andy Sneep's studio. So Andy, he's the he's the guitarist in Judas Priest now. Um, so it was Andy's place, and that was his dad. But nobody had asked him. He just suddenly went past on a ride on lawnmower. Passed on the lawnmower, and then of course one of my all time favourite photo shoots was actually on my sit on lawnmower in my garden. That was a hoot. Yeah, that was brilliant. Just uh, it, that that was all part of the same bizarre day for us. Um, you know, sitting in your garden doing photos on sit on lawnmowers. Yeah, and we bought the bunny costume and the clown yeah. costume. And my daughter got in one, and her boyfriend got in the other one. Happy days, Pete. Happy oh, day. beyond, beyond happy, <laughs> beyond happy. The, the, the bestest of the bestest days for us. Oh, great, great days, and there's more great days to come. Raise I your snails. Sh- come on, let's have it. I, I, I really hope there are when they let us out of this godforsaken plague that we're in the middle of at the moment. Maybe we can go and have a bit more fun. Yeah, I'll, I'll get my W back. I, I've got to get that. Back. <laughs> yeah, everybody needs a W back in their lives. Yeah, I do. I really do. So um, I'm, I'm going to tell you one more story because I, yeah. I don't think I've told you this. But this is how bizarre and synonymous we have become with each other now. That a few years ago, uh, I went to a gig in Manchester and, uh, and Eddie Clark, who was the guitarist in Motred, Fast Eddie, um, was on the bill. So he was supporting Saxon. Uh, and I'd gone along. Uh, and a mate of mine was singing for, for, for his band that night. And he came out front. He said, oh, Eddie's heard you here. Will you come back and meet him? Well, I'm total fanboy. For, for Motorhead, I mean, just our band, love, 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 love Motorhead. So the chance to meet Eddie, for me, it's the guy who wrote Ace of Spades. Right? Of course I want to go and meet him. So I'm like really excited. Get taken backstage, go to meet Eddie. And he sat there in his dressing room on his own, get wheeled in, get introduced. And do you know the first words that came out of his mouth? He said, I heard you played with Kim Wilde. What was it like? <laughs> <laughs> That's how ridiculous this got. You know what? I've got a lovely story about Lemmy because I did a, um, a, a German TV many, many years ago uh, with Kirsty McCall. And I was standing uh, backstage and um, I, actually, no, I was backstage and he was in the dressing room next to me and he invited me into his dressing room to drink vodka with him. And he had like these white plastic cups and he poured me out a really long one. I had a bit of a, I had this, the girl from the record company who was acting sort of as my uh, show, not, not, not chaperone. She was all a bit, mm. and I go in there, he's got his feet up on the thing and he's down in the vodka and I'm having a few sips with him. But, you know, I, I wasn't much of a drinker in those days. <laughs> Made up for that later <laughs> on. <laughs> and, um, and then I went out and I was looking at Kirsty McCall. I was just standing backstage, you know, peeking through the curtain, looking at her. And I felt someone come up behind me and kiss the back of my head and then walk away. And I, I looked round and I just saw Lemmy walking away he just come up, kissed the back of my head, and then he walked away. Isn't that a beautiful story? That is, that is just glorious. Isn't it? It's the lemon, isn't it? It really is, yeah. I just was so... Oh, it was a beautiful moment, you know. You don't have many of them in... Well, I do have some beautiful moments. <laughs> <laughs> it is fair to say Lemmy has never kissed the back of my head, and that sadly will never happen now. No, it won't. So um, now that's great. We get to share our Motorhead stories as well. Hey, come on. Motorhead is the epicentre of the universe. So yeah. absolutely right. So I'm going to say thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming on here. Um, well, can't wait for the album to come out, Pete. You and the guys have just done an amazing job. Raise Your Snails just sounds freaking awesome. The video is iconic. It'll go into rock history. It's like one of the best rock videos ever made it's so cool come on you're too kind but i'll take it all obviously yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah thank that boy thank it <laughs> noted so we love you we miss you and obviously fuck you christmas uh, <laughs> have a great one we'll yeah. see you soon auntie all right bye dad fuck bye. you christmas <laughs>